Hello and welcome to Hardcast. We'll be taking another trip to the dead side, but with a feminine twist. I'm Humphrey Erm. And I am Christian Claus. Lifeline. Give me the death-defying Dr. Mirage, Volume 1. All right, Chris. Well, this is our first new series in a while, you know, ignoring her first appearance, you mm -hmm. know, in Shadow Man, which, you know, they were nice enough to include in the end here. Yes. Which I didn't read again. I hope I wasn't supposed to. <laughs> well, yeah, no, of course not. I mean, it's, you know, just it's just there. It's present. So, but what do you think? So, uh, I like it as a premise, and uh, it felt a bit more concise than compared to Shadow Man. Okay. But I'm not sure about uh, just having us like uh, I don't know. I'm not sure if I'm like, gonna go after it as uh, like oh you know when when's the next uh, issue? Can I comment on your amazing interviewing skills? Okay. What do you think of this comic? I think it was amazing. <laughs> well, I don't know. Usually when I say these things, you know, it's uh, I always let you ravble on and on, so I thought I'd get a word in first. Oh, yeah, true. true. <laughs> um, well, I'm not going to ravble on for a long time because I didn't really like it. All right. Oh, not at all. So not, not uh... I mean, I spent most of the volume just confused. All right. Like absolutely and completely confused I, I don't i don't know how to explain it maybe i'm just dumb maybe i'm just not in the right mood to be reading it right now like i don't i don't know i wasn't like too excited right now you know stress at work and stuff like that but when i was reading it it's just reading it and i was just reading the words but they weren't connecting and the pictures didn't really make sense and one of the, the creatures was just talking in too many riddles that just hurt my mm. brain because it didn't really make sense what he was talking, but it felt like it was important. And and there was no character there that was like the translator. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like when you mm. have this kind of character who's being very mystic and stuff like that, you need to have a translator character, someone who can look at it and go like, oh, he means this. You know, so that even the dumbest readers like me can understand what's going on. Mm, no, I, I get I get what you mean. The kind of like the fish out of water character who has to have things explained to them. Yeah, or even just someone you know. Yeah, like well, a translator. Well, you, well, you needed be... some ass, you know. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, not oh. not ne not necessarily exactly. Yeah, as no, you but know. you but you needed the end result of that. Yeah, yeah. And I, I kind of agree with that, but part of me liked the more. Like I I, I agree with that sentiment. But I feel the just overall tone of the book kind of made it work that way, I feel. Like, I, I like it when you kind of have, um, like we've discussed about, like, sci-fi uh, books. Or, well, not books, but, like, the stories where, you know, it, mm -hmm. you can, you know, there's a difference between, okay, this is a book, you know, a story written in our time about the future. And this is a story, uh, take you know, that was written in the future about things in the future. Right. And this kind of felt like that in the sense of, uh, like, the, this whole supernaturalness here didn't feel as, um, I'm not going to say it wasn't, you know, like, ooh, cool, or like, uh, you know, ooh, spooky. But it felt a lot more mundane due to her professionalism, in a sense. You know, like, with Shadow Man, you kind of get, the, you know, Jack Boniface's, you know, like, wow, what is this? Which, you know, it's kind of what you needed. Yeah, I guess, yeah. But here's a lot more, I mean, you know, she still kind of like assess things, you know, and I also, she also has to kind of explain things to like that the billionaire guy. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, you know, it's very, um, yeah, here's the professional, you know, the plumber coming over to, you know, fix things and like, oh yeah, here's the problem. So. And I kind of like that. I, I kind of just feel that's, um, not sure about refreshing. But he has felt uh, nice to have something a bit different rather than having the usual nani. What? Well, it's kind of like the anime thing. You know, they always say nani. You know, like, so what's oh. that? Or like, you know, repeating okay. what the person said. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Metal Gear. I'm, yeah, I'm just... sorry. Some, some, sometimes my things don't really match with you in terms of things. No, no, they don't. No, they don't. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I watch anime. I, I, I do that kind of stuff, but I'm... I don't know. I, I guess. I guess maybe. Maybe you just pronounced it weird. That was like as prop. Nani? What? No. Uh, anyway, um, it just it just feels like there was too much going on for someone who who was 
who, who's just watching, you know? I, I, I don't know. It, it just felt like, okay, one of, one of my biggest problems with the, the, way, the, the way the art was made or the, the decision for the art was that the real world and the ghost world kind of blended together too much. Mm. Like from the art style, I would have preferred a more of a, like a realistic kind of world where, you know, there were sharp lines and it wasn't as jagged and stuff like that. And then the color so scheme then, was a bit more natural. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that I could immediately differentiate between it because sometimes when they were jumping, especially in the later chapters or the later issues, when they were jumping back and forth between the dead side and and the real world, it was just, there was, there was no hard cr- contrast there. And I was just kind of confused often. It took me like one or two panels before I realized, oh, okay, we're back in the, you know, the real, especially when they started doing all the magic stuff in the cellar of the billionaire's uh, mansion, that was a problem because then, you know, that was magic-y. The, the world, the, the, the dead side was magic-y and it was kind of like too much, too much stuff going back and forth. You kind of need separation there, I feel. And um, yeah. And otherwise there was just, there was too much backstory, too much mythos, everything, just way too much stuff at once. It, I felt like it was, it was rushed and I just felt, yeah, I just felt confused most of the time, and I couldn't really enjoy the story because I was more just trying to catch up, and I didn't necessarily want to go back. And a lot of the things, I mean, this 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 is maybe maybe we're reading these wrong in some sense because usually I read the volume in one go, but today I read. Um, well, I read one issue yesterday, and then the rest of the the other four then today. And I had forgotten so much from that first issue. So I'm kind of wondering, how do people usually read their comics? Like, do they do they read one issue, then wait for the month for the next issue to come out, then reread the first issue, and then read the second issue, and then do that again next month? Or, or how does it happen? No, I mean, again, I can't speak for everyone, of course, but... I think it's just, you know, you uh, just read what comes out and you do your best to remember. You know, hopefully mm-hmm. the story is good enough that you, you know, don't forget about it. Yeah, well, because, like, I was totally totally missed, like, why she suddenly had those three, like, items along. Mm. And when I was just scrolling through the pages now, I saw that she, those are the items that she picked from his cellar. And I was like, oh, okay, that's where they are. Totally, I totally blanked on that. I totally forgot about that. And I don't know, there was so much stuff. I got to say the one cool thing, and I, I I mean, can you guess what I'm going to say is the coolest thing of this volume? Well, art-wise or? Well, what I probably love the most of this entire volume. Like, not art-wise, just generally. Mm, no, I don't think so, unless it's something I'm just not thinking of. Yeah, you're probably just not thinking of it. No nudity? <laughs> <laughs> no. No, I have no idea. The aquatic creatures. Ah, right. Like the entire, you mean the, enti- the entire mistress there, the white mistress or the pale mistress, whatever yeah. they called her? Yeah. And that entire scene, like all that stuff there, that was basically like Atlantis. That's true. Yeah, I, don't know. I, didn't, I guess it didn't make super impression on me about because of that. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah, no, but I, I love that part. Like, I would have loved to stay there a little bit more. That was pretty cool. I mean, yeah, and and not not to like bash against the art. I mean, we'll we'll talk about this maybe later then. But the art is great. It's it's, I mean, it's beautiful. I mean, it's it's, it's a perfect style for this kind of story where everything's kind of mystical and and dead and stuff like that so it's a perfect style for it i just feel like the coloring should have been a little bit different when there's a you know dark side and dark side i, I think you side. had that same problem in one of the last shadow man volumes because yeah, the artist so the artist the same artist worked on both yeah then that yeah i think i remember now saying that yeah so so i guess he i guess he didn't learn <laughs> mm. 
I mean, not that he needs to learn from me. I mean, he's mm. a professional artist. I sit at home talking into a microphone about why comics should be better. So, yeah, well, you know, obviously you know better. Of course. So, yeah. yeah otherwise, well, yeah, it's really, really nice. Well, again, it's, I feel the whole, I think I wrote down here, um, what's called, uh, let's see. Yeah, it has to, it, it, his style helps illustrate the more ethereal environment. Mm-hmm. Like the dead side stuff, you know, is perfect with this style. But yeah, I agree he has a lot with of you. colors with like emotions and stuff like that. Yeah, but also just overall, you have the feeling, a bit of an uneasiness, you know, just mm-hmm. the textures and such. Like I wouldn't, like I wouldn't like it if the real world or like the live world world of the living was, you know, like totally different. No, you know, I wouldn't want it to be like very traditional comic book style, but. At least I think the coloring. I think if the coloring was a bit more um, quote realistic, unquote, normal. Or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's the yeah. one thing that really would, because you know, the sketchiness still still works, because that's just kind of like the style. But if you could just you know kind of like have some more. Uh... I mean, I'm looking well, here on the thumbnails, and it yeah, does well, seem to page be page forty a... is pretty good. Say again, page forty. Let's see. But this is the thing. I mean, this is after all this like demonic shit happened and, mm. and all these ghosts and stuff like that. And this is like a calm moment. And it feels right. Like, yeah, it's calm. So now you have this the sun going down, so everything's pretty much yellow and there's a little bit blue where the shade and what the shade is and the shadow is and stuff like that. And then everything is normal. Like the colors are normal. And I like that. That's ve- if you just look at this, you're like, yes, this is very in the real world. And then you go to the next page or the or a couple pages down two pages down when they're back in the dead side and it's like yeah this is more funky it's blues and greens and reds it's like yes this is not real so i don't know yeah no that's that's fair so it's um uh, yeah but i think we made our point in that sense yeah but otherwise the uh, biggest... art wise yeah so I do want to say I love um, the what's called uh, Roberto's um, use of the borders to, for like negative space. Like if you look on page uh, 44, for example, mm-hmm. see like the third panel there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Again, you know, I'm not sure about what that in this case, like what it would mean. You know what I mean? Like I'm not sure what this, uh, you know, does story wise. But that's an effect. It's cool, and it's not distracting either. So it's not like, "Hey, check out this cool thing." Yeah, but I don't understand what's happening now. Yeah, I know. I mean, he does it again in in page um, forty seven as well, which mm. is a really nice background when he's when the the guy is attacking. Oh yeah. Well, I always yeah. like those kinds of like you know, you have to really put attention on the figure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really like these two. I mean, and again, art wise, it's it's excellent. It's really excellent. But I just feel like the contrast was missing between real world and not. And here's one of the things that I was really confused about, like from a story wise, these monsters, I thought they weren't able to get through. Like this is this is the problem because <laughs> the way that I understood it when they were talking about that they were building the wall closed, I feel like this this, this red thing that's there is a portal between the the area where these these monsters are and where these kind of friendly dead people are. So now the friendly dead people are building a wall or building the the wall in front of the portal so that they're safe, right? So they're closing off the portal. But then without any problem, they seem to be able to get through that portal. So why are they standing there with these people building the wall, I, I, like this was one of those things I still don't understand. Even at, at the end of the comic, I didn't understand what that hole in the wall was. Like, is it the portal to the real world? Then why are they boarding it up? And then, but then, because I, I just, it's just like, what? What is that? No, no, I see what you mean. Um, I mean, as I understood it, it's the whole thing they are talking about—the breach. So, but the breach to what? Well, no, no, no. The breach isn't about locked or not. It's like the breach should not be there. It's something that's come up because of like uh, the what's called what the uh, Marsh has been doing with the demon. 
Yeah. So, you know, so like it, it, its existence in of itself is like wrong, so to speak. But what is the breach? Is, is the breach then the, the red light? Well, no, it's more like that gap. I mean, it's red, the environment is red, you know, because that's where okay. like those demons are and stuff. Okay, so the gap is is what? It's a gap in the in the wall? Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, like the one in like page 108, you know, in the last panel there. I mean, that's the breach that she's, you know, running through. Yeah, okay, so... <sighs> okay. <laughs> and, and, due to, and due to the, what's called, the interference then of uh, March and the other guys, you know, that the breach was becoming bigger and bigger, and eventually it would be big enough for, like, that whole army to go through. Okay, so... Okay, so why... Why aren't they attacking the people who are building or trying to reinforce the breach? I don't know. <laughs> because it seems like they're just standing there looking at the breach and just waiting. And then there's these people who are using their life essence or whatever to, to close it. And they're just still standing there waiting. I mean, that's what I was kind of not understanding. I wasn't understanding... Because the thing is also then they started attacking when they saw Dr. Mirage, but they weren't attacking anyone else. So can they attack? I mean, it's just so confusing because it's just like, because uh, they also look so different. Like what's the difference between a ghost, like a, like a dead person and these monsters? Like are these monsters somehow like the animals of the dead side or or are these monsters somehow like a, like an evolution of, of a dead soul. Like if a soul becomes corrupt or something like that, it becomes one of these demons. Like, see, see that's what I mean. That there's too many things unanswered and, and just like, it feels like I was more confused than um, like, what's the word? It, it wasn't a mystery. It was confusion. Right, right. Well, in this case, there is no real mystery in that sense compared to like, you know, how else they, you know, in terms of how they're telling it. So confusion, exactly, I understand. Yeah, but... I think there's yes, you know, because I'm kind of like checking the stuff that you're talking about. Mm. So, and I'm not sure. Maybe I just um, sort of not not to say that I just like you know read through it and ignore confusion. But I am noticing a lot more stuff now that you're mentioning, and uh, mm. I guess it's just a bit too many elements. Like there's a lot of like rules and setups and like factions, you could say. Yeah. And, you know, they do explain them, but kind of, um, I wouldn't say too late, but it's just kind of, yeah, it's just a lot of steps going in. And at times it kind of feels like they're forgotten a bit. Yeah, yeah. It's, I agree, it's not the, it's the, not paced the best way and not explained the best way. But I, I didn't mind it when I was rereading it. I just kind of liked overall, like, ooh, yeah, you know, this kind of cool spiritual uh, plane and... Uh, oh, there's these, like, demons there and stuff like that. Oh, they got to stop them from coming through. And that's kind of how I simplified it. Right. Rather, not really thinking too much about the how and why. Well, I think the problem for me was that there was a resistance. You know, like, because the, the, the thing that confused me was then the people who were building the wall or building up that, that closing it off or something like that. Because the way that it was set up, it looked like they were, like, Stop trying to stop the demons from coming into their area. You know what I mean? Like there was this this border, like this red light or something like that that was being held up, but it has this it had this danger of breaking. So they decided to build a wall instead while it was still up. So that then when it does break, um, they can't get through because the wall is there. That's what I was thinking. But then the fact that they were just able to walk through, maybe think like, well, why don't they just kill the people who are trying to build the wall and or like destroy them or however you would kill someone who's already dead. But you know what I mean? So so it's just uh, so confusing. But the, the water people were cool. <laughs> yeah, no, but I'll agree with you. It was an overall confusing setup. But I think I just like the overall feel of it. In terms of yes, the yeah, yes, the kind of I was enjoying the ride, so to speak. Yeah, I mean so the, the concept is really nice. I really like the idea of then this woman who can see ghosts and you know communicate with them and and uh, that's never and been done before. 
No, it's never been done before. So, but speaking of which, because you know, I was gonna like uh, name a you know Ghost Whisperer and all that. Mm-hmm. But that, that was a pretty good show. I remember watching that when I lived in the states. Yeah, I watched it a couple of times too. But uh, what's called uh, this is uh, again. I think this is the first property that's gonna be go to TV on the CW. Yeah, yeah. So, what do you feel after reading this? Like, does it then feel like this is a good property to uh, turn to television? Do you think? Well, it- I mean, obviously, her going to the dead side will not be a normal occurrence. No, no, no. obviously. I mean, this is going to be like season finale. I'm, I'm pretty sure that this is going to be probably like one of those things where she's still in training, so she mm. kind of has to first learn everything and then the season finale will be her then opening the the portal to the dead side yeah they're gonna save all that budget for the last episode where they can then you know pop her into the dead side unless they have to make it super simple and just make it look like the real world but with a filter yeah pretty much so but that of course would be boring but yeah who knows well i mean you don't underestimate uh, the don't underestimate the CW. I mean, they've done pretty good things with you know oh, yeah. a lot of the superhero stuff that they've done. Yeah, yeah, no, no. I'm not saying that they can't do it. I mean, you know, they've definitely impressed. You know, you know, even though at times you can tell they're little like shortcuts here and there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you kind of like, oh, okay, so we can't have that kind of character, you know, because his powers are too silly. But we can have a giant uh, shark person. Of course. So you know, that, so that's the thing. They always kind of make up for any for anything they cut. They usually make up for having something else. Yeah, but I do think that the CW version of this is going to be very, you know, helping people along, he- uh, like heavy. Like it's going to basically well, it's very be Ghost Whisperer. Yeah, you know, it's, it will be about something about. Uh, I mean, it'll be kind of like in like Ghost Whisperer, but then it'll also have a bit. I think they go a little uh, uh, Ghostbusters on it in terms of like yeah. non ghost things. Yeah, kind yeah. of like the demon stuff here. I mean, it's easy enough, and you can have then like her learning, you know. Well, you know, like learning life lessons in that sense. But, you know, they'll have like themes in the episodes. Do you think she's going to, um, like her husband's going to be alive or is he going to be dead at the beginning? So, I don't know. I mean, again, it's all about how they want to go at it in that sense. I don't think they're going to be trying to, uh, you know, make a, make a cinematic universe within the TV as well. Yeah, true. So I don't think they'll matter too much, you know, if, th- if things are going to connect or not. But honestly, I just prefer, I mean, it's clear from the premise here that him being dead is kind of core of her character. I mean, even take like even like Gotham, you know, they still wait to make that until his parents are dead. You know, I mean, it yeah, would be true. even worse if it was like Gotham, you know, before Bruce, Bruce's parents died. <laughs> yeah. So I think in this case that it seems to be a core tenant to her character. Yeah, but I mean, that's what I mean. Like, what if they started at the point where she's still learning everything? And then that will be her reason to open up the portal to the dead side. So she can find him again. Yeah, maybe. I mean, again, who knows? I mean, I'm, I suppose if it's gonna... Well, actually, I don't know when this will air. I think the news has, about this came out in like November of last year. Has there been any cast anno- announcements? Yeah, I don't think I've heard. I was kind of actually searching a bit just to double check. Yeah. And I didn't find anything newer except for those like last year's statements. I'm thinking Arden Cho... Who? Arden Cho. No idea. Yeah, you probably don't. Um, what, an actress or? Yeah, she's an actress, yeah. She's been in a couple of those Wong Fu videos that I showed oh, you. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, she, 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 I've kind of been following her before she got famous. She was on, um, oh God, Teen Wolf, I think. Mm, oh, wow. Okay. Like that was her like big break. She got that uh, a couple of years ago, and now she's like pretty big. Like, it, it was kind of nice seeing this like struggling actress then make it big because I like been following her on like Instagram and Twitter and stuff like that for like. Well, it's 10 always years nice having least. a success story. Yeah, it was just nice seeing it as well, like her becoming that big. But yeah, so I, I think it would be awesome. I think she could she could totally play this role. Yeah, but it I don't to be know. Asian. It has we to don't want to alienate our main viewers, Chris, with having uh, a non-white actress. Mm-hmm. 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 so no no it's, i mean i can even like even like joking about that feels kind of dirty <laughs> yeah but you know it's gonna happen but the thing is i think this is um i mean if we want to you know talk on those topics a bit here you know um 
I mean, if you ignore the romance question here, because in the end she's doing all of this for her man. Yeah. I guess that's not the most uh, feminist uh, message uh, people would like. But I do like just the whole, you know... I don't know. She, as a character, she works very well, I feel. Like I mentioned the whole professionalism. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, having her then be this Asian, uh, what's called, uh, like a supernatural, um, like medium character. Again, yes, it's like an extra little thing that makes her a little bit different from what we usually see. And the fact that it's not this, um, you know, not going into like this kind of like um, Asian mysticism within it. You know, just because so. Yeah, she true. Be. True. There's no and, like, oh, this is Zen thing and, you know, the ancient monks of Tibet, all that kind of stuff. Well, exactly. Or, you know, if, or if you go like, I mean, I mean, I love Yaki Chan Adventures, but there was always, oh, yeah. you know, and obviously that's the theme of it all. So, it's, you mm -hmm. know, it's not like, uh, why are you always doing about this stuff? Like, well, you know, that's kind of what the show is as a theme. Yeah. But as the thing is, you know, they've already established the Dead Side and Shadow Man. And it's kind of, and that's one thing I actually do enjoy, despite like the whole, the voodoo portion of Shadow Man. It kind of feels very, I'm not sure if I'd say international, but it just kind of feels very general in some sense like i don't really well, feel like no, it's, it's not general it's very christian yeah but even then it has like imagery wise i don't see so much of it i feel like no, I don't no, it's know, biblical it's biblical this is basically hell yeah yeah of course of course but still i don't know i guess it just never felt as um cliched i feel in some ways i don't no, know it's, it's a weird I'm... thing to say like obviously like i'm looking at some images here and obviously the whole red environment and demons i mean that's very cliched Especially the one red demon who looks basically like the devil. Mm. But I don't know. Yes, in general, it's... Uh, I don't know. I guess kind of like the idea of uh, what's called this woman and her ghost husband. It's yeah. kind of like a cute thing. I mean, I mean that the main cover for the volume and for the first issue, mm. I think, encapsulates that very well. There's just something very nice about her, like, holding on to her man's face. And he's just like this ghost wisp thing. I'm um, trying to. Oh. I wanted to start singing the song from Ghost, but I can't remember what it was. <laughs> oh yeah, wait the 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 one with Ruby Goldberg. Uh, no, the one with the pottery with um. Yeah, yeah, that's Whoopi Goldberg's Pat in there. Well, not the. You don't. You don't say like. Oh, you mean the one with Whoopi Goldberg, the side character of that movie? Hey, she's the one in that scene. We just don't get to see it. Oh, I, I've never actually seen the movie. So, wait, he possesses Whoopi Goldberg? No, no. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. So, we, I so mean, basically we see him Whoopi and Gold her, but it's, it technically would be Whoopi Goldberg and her. Like, if, oh if, if a third person were to look in. So, she basically has sex with Whoopi Goldberg? Yeah. Oh, my God. I never knew that. Well, again, you know, they don't show it like that. They're showing, you know, him as himself. But, yeah. I did not know that. I've never seen the movie. I've only seen that scene. Oh, okay. So well, I can't remember the other actor's name, so she was the only one I could remember, so that's why I Well, Patrick it. Swayze is the guy. Swayze. Oh, my God. So, But yeah, I know what you're referring to, the pottery scene, the famous one. Oh, uh, my God. You've probably seen the, what's called, the Naked Gun parody more often. Yeah, yeah, I have. But either way... But yeah, no, again, you know, it seems like it would just work as a fine, you know, CW show. Oh, yeah. Definitely. I get the impression they'd have more And we will review it of... here. Hmm? And we will review it here when it comes out. Oh, yeah, definitely. It'll be our own, like, little side series that will come out, like, a day after we've seen it or so. Yeah. But, um, what's called, um, but the, speaking of which, in terms of changes and such, something at least that I've noticed with all of these shows, uh, they definitely increase the supporting cast. I mean, it's, it's, she's very, like, alone in this. You know, she has her agent. But he disappears pretty much after the first issue. Okay. That is just something I get uh, get an impression of with a lot of these shows. Like, they don't seem to like focusing on on one person too much. We have to have, like, a large cast where we have a lot of dialogue we can have, and as well as more plots. Yeah, true. I mean, they might take the agent character and then make a new... Like, make him more prominent. In the show. I mean, I like that it's like a loan kind of thing. Yeah, me I like too. she's doing this loan. But, yeah. yeah, I mean, she's going to get a demon sidekick as well. And she's like... But it takes a human form for the most part, because that's just... Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then and then they have like the weird transition like they Super do in Buffy. Supergirl and Martian yeah. Manhunter. 
Yes, wow. yes. <laughs> and also um, his husband, or her husband, uh, what, Juan is his name? Oh, yeah. I can't remember how they spelled that. Uh, yeah, H-W-A-N, I yeah. think. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's when you said it there, I was like, no, Chris, not Juan. You know, because I think I'm like Mexican. No, no, Juan. Oh, um, dude, what's called, uh, what's called, uh, inter- interracial gay couple with Juan and Juan. That, that, so we'd that, have no oh no so we'd have Juan then in the in like the dead side doing his thing has the same time when she's doing her thing on the real world that kind of stuff so there'd probably be like those intersecting stories and stuff like that too that could work yeah but yeah I'm actually looking forward to it so you know we'll definitely watch the first episode and see what we think well you know we're also all valiant fans you know we have to take what we can get <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's our motto. <laughs> nah, nah, it's our motto. <laughs> so, but all right, um, let's Why see. can't we have some of that DC or Marvel money? <laughs> soon, soon. So 2018, they pushed it back one year, but, you know, 2018. <sighs> so, but yeah, no, um, with those things mentioned, I mean, we talked about the art already, um, all right, I wrote this down, I guess, as a, like a minor point, not really uh, that it means anything in, in of itself. But uh, this is the first um, series from Valiant, at least in the reboot, uh, was called Written by a Woman. Ooh, I didn't notice. So, yeah, again, you know, it sh- shouldn't matter in that sense, but... Uh, no, no, but I mean uh, in the same sense, like, there's no notable difference. The writing was just as good as if it was a man, so... You didn't even have to mention it, Humphrey. Yeah, I know, but you know, it's, but in this case, it's not you know, if it was just that you know, if we already had several, if, if it was all women writers, then you know, it wouldn't really be anything to bring up. But this is the first, and that's always you know something people want to you know bring up. Oh, the first cre- you know the, the first female created you know Cartoon Network show. Oh, the first this you know. So you know, just something like uh, something to bring up in that sense. Yeah. So, no, I guess in those things, too, you know, it gets into this whole, uh, as I mentioned, you know, it still comes into this whole uh, romantic kind of thing about it all. So kind of stereotyped in that sense. Yeah, yeah. So, but again, Wait, I just... liked it, actually. I really liked this robe. I liked the flashbacks with the two. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I like that, too. They feel, they they seem like a really nice couple. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things where it's nice to just kind of, you know, a little voyeuristic, you know, just looking at them. <laughs> Yeah, you know, we're only seeing like the best of it all. And obviously, if we, especially you know, in a TV series, that's what they'll do. They'll do the whole Arrow thing with flashbacks to when they were together. Oh God, yeah, of course, of course. So, so that's that'll be like a way they can have him in there without having to do special effects with him. But I do love that whole thing with the um, that the ghosts were watching them have sex and stuff like that. <laughs> that must be so weird. And they again, that's another thing. This was more of a mystery than a confusion because they explained what the tattoo does without having to like go into all the details. But I know now she has this tattoo and he has it as well, where they can like block off the ghosts. Perfect. But yeah, it's just sweet. You know, just the whole uh, way they're yeah, talking. Yeah. And, I, and I like that kind of stuff when they're kind of, um, what would a word be? Not really debating, but um, well, I guess they're just kind of. Like pointing out like flaws in each other's arguments. Yeah, well, that's what I like about it. It sounded like a real couple. I wouldn't know. <laughs> it, but it does. No, but it does. It does, and it, it, it's. It was so refreshing to read it like that because it was. It was just. Yeah, it felt real. Like the way that they were talking, it felt real. It wasn't in any way kind of like. I don't know how you'd say it. It just. It just felt natural between these two characters just talking to each other. So, yeah. No, I mean, I, I liked it too. Like I said, it was, felt very sweet. You know, without it didn't feel... Um, it didn't feel like too fake in that sense. You know, we're just... Because we're just getting little snippets of their love life. So, obviously, yeah. we're just getting, like, the highlights. But, yeah, it's just nice, you know. And as you said, it was a nice kind of thing because we get some more, um, like, sort of world building in terms of the tattoo stuff. But also, yes, then by, you know, yes, the whole, uh, well, the whole setup, as you were sort of saying there, you know, it's these ghosts hanging around all the time, you know, it's going to be yeah. really distracting and annoying. Think about you taking your shit and you have to look at a ghost in the face. 
So, but yeah, but no, another, another, th- another thing I want to just mention as a confusing point, the whole like tree thing that holds someone and they have to be let out and replaced. Oh yeah, that cage. Yeah. I mean, really interesting concept, like really interesting. But this is where I felt like the rules were a little bit odd because there was that whole thing about like, you know, that he owes you a favor if you take leave him out. But then whoever lets you out, you would owe that person a favor, which again, it's an amazing, like I love that idea. But then I hated the part where she got the, she tricked that monster to, to come in. And then the guy was like, um, oh, but you're going to owe him a favor then if he ever gets out, which obviously he was going to because he has like loads of minions all around him. And then the idea that she said, hopefully by then I'll be far away. It's like, this is in the sense of like, I'll be so far away that he can't request the favor. And I was like, no, that's not how it's supposed to work. Like there has to be some sort of like magical bond that then like compels her to do whatever he wants. Might be saved for the next volume or something. You know, it could be a seed is planted. Yeah, you know, maybe, I guess. I mean, yeah. think about like, in like you know, like gangster stories and stuff like that. You know, like, you know, you owe me a favor. And it's yeah, gonna but be the thing up. is, yeah, but the thing is, like, the way that it was mentioned, the way that it was kind of played, I, I felt like it had to be paid off at the end of the volume. Or or at least the 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 guy that she saved should have said something or there should have been some sort of interaction between them to show that there was, it was more than just a person going up to them and going like, hey, you owe me a favor. You know what I mean? Because it's the, cause even with the gangster movies, there's some power behind it. The power is that you could be killed by this gang. You know, if you don't, owe, if you don't pay up the favor, they're going to kill you. They make you sleep with a fish at Shay. And that's what I mean is like, I felt like there was no urgency here. You know, like I, I wish there would have been a way that like, I don't know, that he could have located her because that he owed, like she owed him a favor or at the end, like at the end, he could have asked for a favor and then she, instead of saying like, no, I'm not going to do it for you, she would have been compelled to like by some magical, mystical force. No, I agree. Especially considering that they do confront each other at the end. Exactly. Think that would have been the like, perfect kind of do time. something there, and that's where she'd have to be clever. Like, you know, okay, exactly. yeah, sure, I agree. I'll, I'll do the thing you want. But yeah, then, monkey pot. Hey, monkey you pot. said to do this thing, and then, you know, she went, like, super literal or something. Exactly. I agree. It does seem like it's a thread that kind of just, you know, it's, it just kind of is left alone. It's kind of just dropped. But, ah, well. Uh, one question. Um, mm-hmm. What's called? Did you read any of the supplemental stuff at the end? I did not. You have to tell me if there's supplemental stuff, dude. I didn't know either until I came there. Okay. So I totally forgot. Because these are kind of things I wish they'd have with like every issue or like every volume. Because it's just a nice mix of like art and writing. They'll have like a show a page and then they'll have like the script for that page. Yeah. 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 I was just thinking since you're, you know, uh, doing a little bit of comic writing right now, could be inspiring. I, yeah. I didn't realize it was a comic. I didn't realize it was, um, I think it was actually a script because it didn't look like a script. It looked like just explanations. What do you mean? Like I didn't see that it was an actual script. Oh, script. Yeah, yeah. No, I I, I understand that. But yeah, it's it's an actual thing. You know, we actually have the, what's called? Even though you mentioned it, I'll uh, I'll definitely check it out now. Uh, Yeah, it's just neat. Art-wise, too, it's kind of cool seeing, you know, like with the coloring process, how they using these textures and such just to give it all. Uh, it's also kind of interesting having uh, like the what's called the character designer not actually draw the book. I mean, again, you know, within like animation, it's understandable because you know it's a lot of work, so you're not going to have like the designer do all the animation. But here, it just kind of looks a little amusing to have like someone draw everything and then okay, here's another artist. Yeah. True. But yeah, no, I like these kinds of things. And I think they might actually start doing it more often now. Because I think if I remember correctly, in The Valiant, they had a lot of that. Yeah, yeah, I think I remember that. So I'm not I'm not sure if it's all of them or just some. But um, if they start doing this all the time, you know, I'd really like that. Because yeah, it's just a nice uh, feature, I feel. Because it's an easy way to kind of fill it out if you need to fill out the volume a bit. Yeah. And it's something that, you know, does work in that sense. Because... 
I mean, it's a kind of cheap thing in a sense, you know, oh, here's here's a black and white page from the book you just read, and here's the all the text you read, but beside it. Right. But, but I do like something. it, especially because because with comic writing, again, the problem with comic writing is you're always you're speaking directly to the artist. You're not talking to like, it's not like a screenplay where you're basically writing to everyone because everyone on the set from literally from like the the main actor to all the way down, like director and, and lighting and, and even gaffer, like they all have to read the script. But with um, a comic book script, you're basically writing directly to your uh your artist so that's it's so much more loose like you literally have i mean i was reading some of neil gaiman's um scripts and he literally starts with like uh so hello there how are you doing um i guess we're gonna start the comic like this and then he's just like he like he's just free form just writes whatever comes in his mind and that's what he sends out so yeah the editor maybe reads it still and then yeah the the, the artist and that's it so it's, it's, I think it's interesting to see how they write it here, and I'm definitely going to read it now. I mean, thanks for you know mentioning it because I totally skipped over. I'm just looking at it, going like, okay, art, 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 art. Okay, done. Yeah, no, exactly. No, but again, it's it's an easy thing. It's just you know like on uh, DVD. Yeah. Yeah. It's those like sort of uh, easy things to kind of add. I mean, obviously mm-hmm. the whole premise thing, you know, the proposal won't really work. Yeah, I guess since it'll, you know it's now a series in that sense. But um, yeah, it's just nice. I think it's a nice addition, and I hope it's become standard in that sense. But all right, uh, do you have anything else to add? I don't think so. So kind of a short episode today, but uh, yeah. I think we just kind of yeah went through most of it all. So, but uh, yeah, what's called uh, that was the forty sixth episode of Hardcast, detailing the death defying Doctor Mirage, Volume One. You can discuss this episode on Reddit tweet us or you can allow, or you can follow us on Facebook. Links are in the show notes. Also, all of our episodes are available on our hosting site, Podbean. Catch us next time for our next episode discussing the return of Quantum and Woody. <laughs> <laughs>